What's up, Copy Squad? It's your boy Kyle Milligan coming to you live from Boca Raton, Florida. And today I want to talk about three steps to making your ideas stickier. And what this is really about is basically learning how to craft attention grabbing ideas. And this is from a book called Made to Stick. And uh, it's by, I think, Chip and Dan Heath, I believe, are the uh, people who wrote it. Let's see. Uh, Chip Heath and Dan Heath. It's made to stick why some ideas survive and others die and this is basically like a copywriting guide of sorts but it's it's not really because it's not written with the intent to be a copywriting guide it's written to be an idea guide but the principles inside this book are insane for copywriting because they're really about grabbing attention and making persuasive arguments that really resonate inside a person's brain and it's really just about taking things that are abstract or not sticky and very easy to kind of pass over and making them much more abrasive in the way that they will velcro to your mind right so this whole book is about that and he came up with an, uh, a way to come up with stickier ideas and three steps inside this book. And it was like uh, really eye-opening. But before I show you the three steps, I want to show you some examples of sticky ideas in action. And then I'll kind of explain how these relate to the three steps. So here are some examples. Exhibit A. This is a money map promo. Uh, I've, I've marked this one up. It's it's note, noted up. Oh, by the way, before I forget, in the corner it says Copy Squad Inner Circle, that corner. And uh, if you're interested, like PDFs like this, this PDF with my video breakdown is inside the Copy Squad Inner Circle. You can go to kylethewriter.com forward slash squad and I break down copy every other week like this. And I do uh, conference calls with members every other week to talk about their copy. So that's Copy Squad Inner Circle if you, want, if you want this stuff right here like this, these breakdowns. Anyway, so this is a sticky idea. I'm going to read the headline to you. The verdict is in, investing is dead. 38-year-old Mensa millionaire has figured out a new way for you to potentially double, triple, or quadruple your money every 72 hours without investing in a single stock again. Okay, so thinking about the context of this, this is from Money Map, Public, Money Map Press, which is an investment newsletter. Uh, publishing company right so to have a, a counterintuitive headline like investing is dead here at the top that's pretty pretty wow eye-catching okay so that's one example here's another example uh, America's number one stock analyst says and this is again from money map America's number one stock analyst says I'm done with stocks and so are you after eight years of secrecy Shah Jalani is revealing a new way to make money in America up to 11,000 a week without touching a single stock or stock option again, okay? You don't buy a single stock or a single stock option. And this number one stock analyst says, I'm done with stocks, okay? So keep that in mind. I got another one for you, another example of a sticky idea. We went over this one in my Copy Squad inner circle and the copywriter actually even dropped in and talked about it a little bit with us. This is a, a hot promo. All these promos have made seven figures and that's very important. So this headline reads, I'm a Stansberry subscriber who hated their marketing until Porter helped me retire at 52. I don't have to work anymore now that I'm able to see dependable 15 to 20% annual returns guaranteed by law in a market that's vastly safer and better than stocks. My advice, take this one step and then never buy another newsletter again. Okay, uh, so that's Stansberry and this is one of their headlines that's very sticky and is working. These are all back-end ideas for systems. I'll show you a front-end idea. This is one I worked on, uh, one of my earliest promos, and this is called the $15 trillion gadget. America's number one Silicon Valley insider reveals the $15 trillion gadget, nine times more valuable than Google, Facebook, and Amazon combined. Insiders believe the world's fastest growing startup will use this tech to make a lot of people rich as it dominates a secretive tech revolution set to reach $15 trillion. Okay, so what you probably might have started to pick up on some of the patterns between each of these promo headlines, and you might have heard me, like as I go over them once or twice, really point out the counterintuitive nature of these headlines. So let's talk about the three steps to stickier ideas. Okay, three steps to sticky ideas. The first one, is find the core. What does he mean by find the core? And I think I might draw some uh, parallels here. Find the core is actually a really cool concept or term. Basically, they talk about 
the lead inside this book made to stick. Like when journalists write a, a report, they need to figure out what the most important part of the story is. And uh, that, that what that means is it has to be something that is relevant and important to the reader. So you have to know your audience first. So the core is that like unique thing about your message that is especially important to your reader, okay? And that means it resonates, okay? So let's let's write that in here too. It resonates with reader. Okay, that's very important. It's not useful. The core resonates with the reader. It's not useful. It's not the core. It, by definition, to be the core message, it has to resonate with the reader. It has to be something they care about and pay attention to. Okay, so once you kind of figure out what's important to your reader and you figure out what resonates with them, the second step you want to do is find what is counterintuitive about the core. And we're going to go back to those headlines in just a second and look those over. So what is counterintuitive about the core? So what part of your USP that resonates with your reader the core of your message, what part of it doesn't really logically seem sensible on the surface? If you dig a little deeper into your USP, what will you discover that will be sort of like a surprising, unexpected sort of thing? So let's, let's use that word here, unexpected element, okay? So figure that out. And there is definitely a parallel I want to draw that's kind of dawning on me as I do this. Okay, then the third thing, once you locate and isolate your unexpected element, you need to express that, communicate it. Let's, let's say communicate here. Third thing you want to do, communicate idea. So this is, this is idea. In a way that breaks schemas. Okay, readers, schema. Now you got to know a little bit about what the word schema means. So the word schema basically means like, it is the laws of that person's world, what they believe to be true. And then I'm going to show you some cool things that this relates to for copywriting in a more direct and obvious and like literal way. Okay, so find the core. What's the counterintuitive part of the core? Like what's the unexpected element? Once you find that and isolate that as an idea, you need to communicate that idea in a way that breaks your reader's schema. So if we go back to these examples, okay, look, we're talking about Money Map Press, an investing newsletter an investing newsletter and the headline is investing is dead okay so why would investing be dead think about that all right 38 year old mensa millionaire figure out a new way for you to potentially double your money every 72 hours without investing in a single stock again i can't remember uh it's been a while since i broke this one down but essentially we're not trading stocks so we're probably trading some sort of option it could be an option or etfs leverage every etfs calls, puts, it could be any sort of special thing that isn't technically a stock, right? But in order to get me to that point, you have to break my schema, okay? And then essentially what you can do whenever you've broken a schema, you create a, you create a knowledge gap when you do that. So number three, right? So 3.1 would be, this creates knowledge gap because my whole world view doesn't make sense anymore. So I need you to fill that gap with the new truth. Now you can rebuild the truth. So once you can prove that something that is supposed to be like an obvious, an obvious truth, right, with an unexpected element, once you can prove that that obvious truth isn't true, now my brain is open. It's like it's like a black hole for information. Like it needs something to fill that void. Like I have to have some sort of uh, there's there's dissonance, there's cognitive dissonance. I need to figure this out and scratch that itch. And that's what you can do as a copywriter. So essentially, what you can do is. You tell them the investing newsletter recipient, investing is dead. Well, what am I paying for, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you. You can do this without investing in a stock ever again. So you scroll on down, blah, blah, blah. That's exactly what they did here with the Shah Jalani promo. So this is the same company, so they probably just took an idea that worked and then ran with it on a different promo. So number one stock analyst says, I'm done with stocks. So they took a guy who does stock investing and they took that idea and they turned it on its head and said, well, we're gonna do an options service or whatever this service was, something like covered calls or something like that. So what they did instead is they created this intrigue. So you'll see at the top here, when I was breaking this down, I wrote intrigue, intrigue. Uh, did I write anything like that? Like, uh, nah, I didn't, I didn't put anything in here, but um, I did it up here, contrarian, contrarian on this third one with Stansberry, right? So again, you can see I'm done with stocks and so are you, that breaks my worldview. Like how, how is the number one stock analyst done with that? Like explain 
explain to me the reasoning behind that. So all of a sudden you got me. You got me at least long enough to start reading the promo and try to figure out the answer. Stansberry did it here. Um, I was a Stansberry subscriber who hated their marketing until Porter helped me retire at 52. Okay, so again, the core of the message, what's important to the reader? What's important to the reader is making money, okay? So well, what, what, what's unexpected about these, right? So with these services, what's the unexpected about making money in the markets? Well, it's, we're using options. I'm not sure exactly how this one works, but let's say we're using stock options. We're not using actual stocks. So that's not obvious. Like if I came up to you and said, hey, I wanna do an options trading product. Can you help me sell it? would you immediately think, hey, that's not stocks, right? So what they've done is they've take that, took that regular obvious element of this being an options trading service or something like that, and then they said, I'm done with stocks, you know? And then they kind of like, wait a minute, what do you mean you're done with stocks? And so are you. Why am I done with stocks? My retirement's invested in stocks. So what they did is they found the very unexpected element, right? So they, they took the core, making money in the markets. That's what, that's what resonates with the reader. They want to make money. Okay, well, what's the counterintuitive element of the core or that product, right? Well, it's we're trading options. We're doing them weekly. We're doing in this. We're doing this. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not doing stocks. So we can say we're never going to trade stocks again. And it's like, wow, never thought of that. Like, wow, or apparently a lot of people did, but that's the counterintuitive element that will stop you in your tracks and make you scratch your head and be like, huh, I need to know more about this. Then you communicate that idea, which they did in the headline, in a way that breaks the schema. And whenever you do that, you've got their attention, okay? So this one, I'm done with stocks. Like, even if you scroll down this one. So you come down here, why I'm quitting stocks forever is right there in the promo. Okay, so all this stuff's kind of that unexpected element. Uh, this one's actually about bonds, not options trading. But again, they use the same thing, like, if I'm not trading stocks, then I can say I'm done with stocks forever, which is unexpected. Okay, now let's come to this one. This one's a front end. So these are for expensive, like $2,000 products, or this one's like twelve hundred or 1500 or something like that. But this is for a front end product. Now, a front end product is in like a system, and it's not $2,000. This is only like a $49 product for an investment newsletter. So let's talk about what's counterintuitive about this. And when I wrote this headline, what I was looking at was this idea that something this petite, right? Look at how small, tiny, and insignificant this is, could be valued at nine times Google, Facebook, Amazon, and it's worth $15 trillion, right? So that was the unexpected element. Like I, I had this technology that I knew I wanted to sell and I wanted to make it seem larger than life. I wanted it to seem larger than the biggest behemoths in the world and it fits in your hand, right? So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but what is it? right? What could it be? What could possibly be nine times more valuable than Google, Facebook, and Amazon combined, right? So that is the counterintuitive element of this little piece of plastic, this little piece of technology here in this, uh, in this image. So one thing I want to talk about really quick is we did this in another call before. You'll see that this kind of is very similar to what we did on the order of figuring out your big idea when I was talking about Michael Masterson's Ready, Fire, Aim book. Okay, so let's talk about Ready, uh, Fire, Aim. And this is by Michael Masterson, and uh, it's an amazing book, and I highly recommend it. But in that book, we talked about it probably a week ago on a live, where to come up with your big idea and how to start writing your sales promotion, this is the order of steps that he suggested you do it in. First things first, find your USP. Okay, that's very similar to this idea of finding the core. So he says, first, find your USP. You gotta have your product in front of you and then you gotta figure out what's unique about it. It's the only product that does what, you know? Like what's special about that, okay? The next thing he says is come up with your big idea. Now, what I really like about the framework given in Made to Stick is they're a little more specific there about figuring out the big idea. So what, what Mike, Mike Masterson, or Mark Ford rather, whatever name you know him as, uh, USP, you derive your big idea from the USP. So the, the thing I said was, I'm the, only, uh, I'm the only copywriting guy talking about copywriting as a language, and if you can, uh, oh, I use the big four emotions, and then I talk about the big four emotions as a language, right? So that was my, my big idea, right? So the point is, you have this, this USP, this one single element, and then you basically dig, you research the bejesus out of your USP. And then from there, you'll take one very unique 
element that resonates with your audience and make a big idea out of it. But I really like this idea of finding the counterintuitive element, as they talk about inside of uh, Made to Stick, that makes finding a big idea, I feel like I have a little more guidance in what I'm looking for while I'm researching. And what's crazy is if you look at the promos that we just looked at, the big ideas were outside of the product itself. Like the big idea was that I'm done with stocks for an options trading service, right? So they knew that stocks and trading and investing were important to these readers, and they said, wait, we're done with that, and they try to stop you in your tracks or something like that, okay? The other thing that Mike Mas or Michael Masterson says is that you get your big idea. Once you know your big idea, the big idea will become the fodder for your big promise, okay? And then you can write the promo from there basically then once you know your promo your promise you can begin writing your promo so basically we don't even need like this last step right because it's basically the same thing so you can see here steps one two and three from made to stick very closely align with steps one two and three from ready fire aim um, i talked about this i've been i've been on this kick with reading a lot of different things and finding these parallels or uh, analogies or whatever knowledge compounds i'm pretty sure warren buffett said knowledge compounds just like interest and money so i can now look at this idea of oh i need a usp oh i need a big idea and my big idea will help me find my big promise well now i have extra steps that i can use to dive into that i have more tools in my tool belt and my arsenal is deeper now when i think of usp i think of the core message I need to find the core message that resonates with my reader. What's that? Making money. Okay, now what's counterintuitive about what I'm offering in my product? Well, what would be unexpected is a better way to look at it. So now coming up with my big idea is even easier because I don't have to, I don't have to just think of all the big ideas in the whole world. I have a little bit more narrow focus. Like I'm looking for what am I selling and now what would the mirror image of that be? What would be the unexpected opposite? Like if I'm trying to promote this, what would you not expect me to say, right? So that, that's really important step here, find the counterintuitive element. Then the last thing is make a big promise. And they say communicate an idea in a way that breaks the reader's schema. So your big, your big promise here, right? You make the big promise in a way that violates what you think is correct and right in the world or normal, right? So you're like, well, how is that possible is the next question, right? So my big promise leaves the reader wondering, how is that possible? Look at my first lines in this promo. Hey, see this little thing I'm holding in my hand? It might not seem like much, but the tech inside this itty bitty device is about to make a lot of people rich. How is that possible, okay? How is it this 38-year-old Mensa millionaire figured out a new way for you to double, triple, quadruple your money without investing in a single stock? How, right? That's what you want them to think. That's what you want them to wonder, and that's what's going to get them to go down your slippery slide, as they call it in copywriting, and then read more and figure out more info about your promo. Dude, I really appreciate everyone. Closing words, knowledge compounds. Like, that's just like... Every time you read something, it's it's weird how you can tie it to something else that you've already read in a completely different world. Like Ready Fire Aim was written for people trying to start businesses and it's written by a direct marketing legend, right? A guy who understands sales and marketing like better than pretty much anybody else. Made to Stick was written for people who want to uh, basically be able to get their ideas to stand out and spread which is sort of like a skill set within the business world, but it's not just in the business world. It applies to a lot of things. But what's crazy is these two different worlds completely collide on their methodology for making this happen. They just use different words. And I really appreciate that because just these little nuances in that the fact that these are so similar, but the itty bitty nuances inside them, instead of thinking of this as a USP, think of it as the core message, right? What's the core thing you want to communicate or accomplish? What's the result? Now you have a different frame of mind for thinking about your USP and how to divulge it and how to dig it out. Then like, what's your big idea? Well, maybe think about your big idea as something that is counterintuitive by its nature. Like don't, once you once you put down some big ideas don't discard them automatically if they're not counterintuitive but maybe maybe keep digging until you un unearth that counterintuitive one maybe by accident happenstance you stumble on it or you just you you have like a moment of epiphany right and then once you see that it's counterintuitive you're like wow now i gotta make a big promise on the back of that right now i've got to communicate that i've got to express that big idea in a way that completely violates what person what people think like the norm what violates their schema and the way they believe the world to be so that they're they're compelled they're forced to read more learn more find out more they're forced to ask the big question 
how, right? It's a very important question that they must ask. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Peace out. Copy squad.